item on the agenda is D2, a proposed residential business plan development submitted by 160 North Morgan LLC for the property generally located at 160 North Morgan Street. The applicant is proposing to rezone the site from C1-2 neighborhood commercial district to DX-7 downtown mixed use district and then to a residential business plan development. The applicant proposes to construct a 29 story, 350 foot tall building with 282 residential units ground floor commercial space, and 89 accessory vehicular parking spaces. A 3.01 floor area ratio bonus will be taken, and the overall FAR of the plan development will be 10.01. 20631, this is in the 27th floor. Joshua San will provide the context overview, and the applicant will present their proposal. Mr. San, thank you. Uh, good morning, commissioners. For the record, my name is Joshua San with the Department of Planning and Development. This proposed development is generally located at 160 North Morgan Street and is located within the near west side community area within the 27th Ward. The applicant 160 North Morgan LLC and their development team <clears throat> appear here today for the purposes of establishing a residential business plan development at the subject site. The request is being submitted as a mandatory plan development application pursuant to section 17-08-0512 due to the fact that the proposed building will exceed 155 feet in height in the proposed underlying DX-7 downtown mixed use district. The subject site is located in the near west side community area where the total population is 67,800 in an area that developed rapidly in the late 19th and 20th centuries as an important industrial and manufacturing area. Site consists of sub area A to the north <coughs> located here, also known as 180 North Morgan Street uh, and the site of the restaurant known as Federales and sub area B to the south located here, the larger one uh, known as 160, 160 North Morgan, currently the site of a vacant drive through bank. The proposed site is located on the western side of North Morgan Street, south of the Morgan Street CTA station, as you can see here, uh, that serves the pink and the green lines. The site is currently surrounded by previously industrial buildings that have been zoned for neighborhood commercial and have been or are currently being redeveloped. Majority of the uses in the surrounding area consist of residential, retail, and office space, as you can see on the slide. Here you can see the PD boundary in a red dashed line, the larger footprint, and the property line in a black dashed line. Here are the exist existing conditions along Morgan Street, looking southwest. Uh, as mentioned, this is the Federal site, and this is the old bank. Here you go. And, uh, and it's directly across the street from Do Right Donuts. Exactly, and Shake Shack, and a PF Chang's carryout place. Here are existing conditions along Morgan Street, looking north and west. This is from Randolph with the historic uh, Princey Building along with, this is a front centered uh, view of the bank, old bank that will be redeveloped. And here's another angle. In terms of regional context, the project is in compliance with components of the West Loop design guidelines and the Folsom Market Innovation District Plan, uh, which, is more deep, which is detailed more in my staff recommendations. With that said, I will turn it over to Mr. Richard Clauder with the applicant team to discuss the project timeline and subsequent slides. Thank you. It's here. Did we lose Mr. Clauder? He was on earlier. Is he muted or something? He just joined back and he was here. Uh, oh, no, he's joining back in. Okay, thank you. You're not looking for eight. I'm sorry. I apologize. Can you guys hear me now? Perfect. I'm sorry. Um, I, I lost power at, at the absolute worst time, but. Um, for the record, my name is Rich Clowder. I'm with the law firm of uh, DLA Piper in Chicago. Um, good morning, Madam Chairman and members of the commission. Um, we do represent the applicant on this matter, uh, which is a single purpose entity 
controlled by Sterling Bay. I'm joined today by Fred Kroll and Kiana Barrett from Sterling Bay, Danielle Tillman and Angela Spadoni from BKL Architects, the project architect, and Louie Abuna, our traffic consultant from KLOA. Also present is AJ Patton, whose firm will be the recipient of a directed fee and lieu payment in partial fulfillment of the applicant's ARO obligation under the new 2021 ARO, which as you know, goes into effect October 1st. We'll speak more about that later. Um, in the meantime, the slide in front of you does detail the extensive outreach and community engagement process that resulted in a project that was reduced in scale and neighborhood impact and resulted in meaningful changes to the building's materiality, incorporation of setbacks and entryway and landscaping enhancements. These items will be expanded upon by the architect to whom I will now turn over the presentation and who is Danielle Tillman, Managing Principal at BKL Architects. Danielle, please take it away. Thank you, Rich. Uh, if you will go to the next slide, please. Um, we wanted to show these images, which shows, uh, as Richard was talking about, the project design evolution. Uh, these images show the modifications made based on previously stated DPD and community feedback. In these images, you will see uh, the reduction in height to a 29-story building and the addition of upper-level balconies as well at the, at the southeast corner. You can go to the next slide. Uh, the increased podium setback at the residential entry plaza is further emphasized by the structural expression that is refined and pulled back to the facade of the entry. Next slide. We show here the overall building view from the southeast within the context of the west loop, as well as uh, upcoming developments that are also uh, underway. Next slide. And this view from the Northwest shows the building also within context, looking back to the East. Next slide. The pedestrian context was considered throughout the development of the project. The residential entry at the Southeast area of the podium is emphasized by the metal structural expression and canopy. The setback at the lobby and elevation of the tower above the podium create relief to the historic district and the building to the south, the historic Princey building. Next slide. Retail holds the street edge at the northeast side of the podium to continue an active street condition. Following the West Loop design guidelines, parking is screened and located at two levels above the ground floor and the tower is set back from the podium at an amenity level and terrace where the ceiling will be highlighted with an art mural. Next slide. The location of the building along the vibrancy of Morgan Street and the activity of the Federales uh, created an opportunity to continue the active street condition with the retail glass as it wraps the corner and mosaic art is located at the visible conditions above the alley. Next slide. As we move to the plans, uh, this is the existing plan in its current condition, uh, again with a um, drive through, a vacant drive through bank. Um, and if we go to the next slide. And then here we show the proposed site plan. Next slide. Looking here at the ground level, the residential lobby and retail are located again along Morgan Street. The podium is set back uh, from the property line at the south to provide relief from the Princey building to the south, allowing better access to parking and loading, which are accessed from the south alley. Next slide. Residential entry will be an active space with landscape flower bed, hardscape paving, as well as seating benches. There are also uh, required bike racks uh, located at the entry. Next slide. Level two is a parking level. Next slide. Three and four as well, if we go to the next slide, um, have additional parking as well as um, additional bike parking. Next slide. Level five is a shared amenity level that will include indoor and outdoor amenities for the residents. Outdoor amenity also includes the dog run, which will be connected to an interior dog lounge. Next. 
We begin the residential plans here with level six uh, at, with eight units. Next slide. The, the lower tier, level seven through 22, have 13 units. The tower footprint shifts to consider relief from adjacent buildings, optimal unit layouts, as well as views. And the next slide. The upper tier, levels 23 through 28, has 12 units, creating four larger units and introduces unit balconies at that southeast corner. Next slide. Level 29 is an upper tier amenity level with roof deck with a pool. And then if we go to the next slide, we see here the roof plan. Uh, my colleague, Angela Spadoni, director at BKL Architecture, will take you through more of the exterior wall now. Thank you, Danielle. Good morning, everyone. Thank you again for having us. Uh, we can switch to the next slide. So I'm gonna explain the exterior design. Uh, we worked very closely with the city and, and took the comments from the community as we began to um, revise and get to what you're looking at today. Uh, so on the left side of the screen, you're seeing the east elevation along Randolph, and then you're seeing the south elevation on the right, which abuts the historic Princey building. What I wanna emphasize here and what you've kind of seen through some of the renderings Danielle had on the screen is how we took great care in kind of breaking down the mass of the tower. We've separated it into a north and south kind of expression. We'll discuss that a little bit more as well as vary the heights of each piece to really let it break down and relate to the scale of the neighborhood. We have also, as you saw in the renderings, um, you know, grounded the building with a masonry base uh, to relate to the concept context, but the tower itself is primarily a glass and metal tower. West elevation, um, you're seeing, and then the north along the neighbor's uh, print, um, federales and the uh, art mosaic installation that you saw in the rendering that Danielle showed. These are diagrammatic sections. So you can understand the makeup of the program of the building. You saw that in plan, but in section, you can see our ground level of active uses, retail, residential lobby, and then uh, you know a few back of house uh, requirements. Sandwiched in as going up, we have three parking levels. We have amenity on level five, which overlooks and activates the street front. Then we have our residential levels, uh, two tiers of that, the upper tier having the balcony, as Danielle mentioned, and then level 29 is a full amenity level as well with mechanical on top. So going in closer to look at a few of the details that we have developed, this is looking at the podium. You can see in the center there's um, on the left side of your screen, there's the east elevation that's showing that residential entry. Um, so this is composed of masonry brick that's wrapping it. And then we also have incorporated a metal canopy to provide shelter for the residents as they come and go from the building. And you can start seeing that structural expression come up the tower, grounding the tower to the, to the base of the building and really connecting the tower and the podium. Uh, you see how it's starting to Y there. Thank you, yeah. On the right side of the screen, you're seeing more of the, um, the corner that neighbors Federales. And this is your retail side. So you're seeing how the glass turns the corner to really open up the corner and respond to the traffic, the pedestrian traffic that's coming from our Green Line station. And then you see our two levels of parking uh, which will be a translucent glass. And then you see a little, a peak of that level five amenity that's gonna be overlooking Morgan. Next one. Moving up the tower, on the left, you now see that B structure that's transferring our tower columns down um, to an uninterrupted entrance and kind of an open, you know, pushback plaza for the, for the residents. Uh, you see that there is a um, metal vertical expression on the south side of the tower. It's a metal uh, mullion cap. Uh, as well as the two structural elements that are carried up the entire um, tower as well. On the right, you're seeing the expression of the north side of the tower. So the vertical metal cap drops off and is no longer used. Instead, we are introducing a colored spandrel panel and you'll see a, an example of that material later in the presentation. I think you might be frozen. Did we lose Angela. Okay, yeah. I, will, I will continue for Angela until she comes back. Um, here we are seeing uh, mid areas of the of the tower um, where we can see here at that south block that the metal uh, panel, uh, as as Angela was talking about, that horizontal uh, condition 
I'm sorry, vertical condition actually maintains throughout the tower. And then at the north block, where we see the colored spandrel uh, takes that condition vertically up the uh, tower of the building. Um, the consistency that is wrapping around horizontally uh, through the building is this uh, metal fin condition that uh, wraps the building or, uh, horizontally. Next slide. Again, moving further up the tower, uh, we see that the uh, expression at the southeast corner of the balconies, uh, which are integral into the uh, form of the building, um, and uh, on the the sorry the east facade of the building, um, where we can see how that again horizontal wrapping of that metal condition um, ties the two. Uh, forms together, the two uh, distinct uh, north and south uh, towers together. Next slide. So here we have an overall building view from the southeast um, as we have uh, adapted the building uh, with the responses from DPD and community input. Next slide. We have here again a ground level site plan, which shows uh, both the uh, the full uh, PD site uh, within its um, within this view here, um, and showing um, the intricacies of also the uh, street planters, uh, which will be located uh, along Morgan Street um, as well. If we go to the next slide. Danielle, I'm back on. If you guys can hear me, if you want me to take back over. We can if you'd like to take okay, uh, sure. the impact study. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, the traffic in impact study, as you know, KLOA is on the call. So just we did our due diligence and there is a report on that. Um, so any any questions can go to Lue. You can go to the next slide. So these are our urban design consideration slides and some diagrams that help you further understand how we designed the exterior of the building. So um, one, the, you know, the mid block tower creates diversity of building heights across the development. So at the top, you see the orange line um, showing how we did end the building height in different states to kind of really break down that mass. And then, um, you know, ensuring that we have the continuity of the vibrant retail already started by Princey and Federale, so continuing that activation. And then directing, um, also responding to that unique condition of the proximity of the L tracks and how we respond to that by kind of setting the tower back and also con considering sound considerations um, from that L track as well. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, looking at the podium, we did set back the residential entry for a few reasons. One, we know this is a highly pedestrian traffic street. Uh, heading north to south. So by recessing that entry, we give a lot of more, a lot more space for residential flow and we're not clogging up that um, public way. Additionally, we wanted to set back against that Princey building because the, the beauty of that building does turn the corner to the north. So by setting that entry back, we're actually able to highlight that building as you're coming, uh, moving south along Morgan. And then the connection of the uh, Randolph Street activation, or I'm sorry, Morgan Street activation and how we are trying to connect that for a level five and uh, really connect that, um, those uses. And then Danielle did talk about that gap at level five, that exterior amenity space that's also kind of responding to the scale and height of the Princey building to the south and allowing for some relief between our tower and the existing Princey building. Uh, next slide. So the top of the tower, um, we really capitalized the design of this to, um, to really give views for the amenity space at the top. So views both north looking towards the city, views south, and really um, orienting the upper level amenity deck to capture the sun and the sunlight. There will be a pool that's planned up there, as well as balconies for the upper tier residents to um, have light and air at the top as well. Next slide. Uh, open space and landscaping. I think Danielle did talk, uh, touch on this a little bit as well, but just to um, reiterate that we have four trees that will be along Morgan. And then um, we have our entrance plaza that's gonna be landscaped with flower beds, benches, and some um, highlighted paving patterns as well. Here's the building materials that I referred to earlier in the presentation. So we have a few different glasses going on. And, you know, we have our vision up the tower and then we have some conditions where we're using spandrel to match vision. Uh, that should kind of just fade away. 
We have the accent sandra glass I spoke of that we are using on the north side of the tower to bring color up and into the tower to really differentiate it among the skyline and continue that color of those brick base that you're seeing BR01 uh, at the podium. Um, continuing on with the glass, we have some uh, a sandra that we're using at the uh, garage that is, um, that is uh, translucent and then a metal panel as well, that color is shown. Thank you. We can go to the next one, thanks. Um, our sustainability strategy, we are doing uh, green globes, two globes, where we need to obtain 70 points. To do so, we're exceeding the stormwater ordinance by 25%. We're providing EV charging stations, and we're doing waste diversion during construction to get to the total 100-point requirement. Um, and then for stormwater management, um, we are going to have an above ground detention tank. We're wrapping back to Morgan Street. And again, this does exceed the 25 um, percent requirement as part of our Chicago sustainability goals. So um, I'm glad I didn't get <laughs> cut off again. And hopefully Rich is still on as well. I'm going to hand it back over to him. OK, thanks. If you could advance to the next slide. Um, this project will proceed under the 2021 ARO. It is the first such project to do so. To fulfill the requirements, Sterling Bay will provide half of the 20% at the weighted average of 60% AMI on site with the unit mix you see before you. In addition, the applicant has agreed to a directed fee and lieu payment to fulfill the additional 10% requirement of over $5 million to help enable a project in the third ward at 26th and Federal to be undertaken by an up and coming developer, AJ Patton, who is with us today. This contribution will allow for his project to include 32 affordable units in his 44 unit project in what he is referring to as SL Solar Lofts. Again, at 26th and Federal in the third ward. Um, if you can go to the next slide, this slide shows yet more public benefits associated with this project, which is estimated to cost $120 million and which will include a nearly $2 million contribution to the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund. Um, as you know, local hiring and MBE WBE is of critical importance in this city and uh, also, of course, to Sterling Bay. If you'd advance to the next slide, I'd like to turn over the presentation very briefly to Kiana Barrett with Sterling Bay, who will wrap up our aspect of the presentation by summarizing this slide. Kiana, if you're on and uh, audible, please proceed. Good morning. Thank you, Rich. Uh, Kiana Barrett, Director of Diversity for Sterling Bay. Consistent with our commitment to robust engagement of MWB participation, we will coordinate with the City of Chicago assist agencies and other advocacy groups to ensure that there is full awareness of opportunities for bidding and participation. We will also engage um, the Sterling Bay Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Council to host uh, networking sessions for direct contact between MWBEs and estimators and our GCs to be able to facilitate any question and answers and to ensure that packages are broken down into a palatable size. We also will be partnering with local developers and general contractors to build a pipeline of additional MWBEs to build capacity um, across the construction industry. And we'll be requiring that all of the bidding subcontractors commit to the highest standards of MWBE participation and engagement on our project for second and third tier participation. Um, at this point, I'll turn it back over uh, to the city to proceed. Yeah. The Department of Planning and Development has reviewed the materials submitted by the applicant and we have concluded that the proposed development would be appropriate for the following reasons. The proposal is in general conformance with the West Loop design guidelines approved and adopted by the Chicago Plan Commission. The proposal is also in general conformance with the Fulton Market Innovation District Plan approved and adopted by Chicago Plan Commission. It allows flexibility and application of selected use, bulk, and development standards in order to promote excellence and creativity in building design and high quality urban design. The proposed plan development promotes transit, pedestrian, and bicycle use, ensures accessibility for persons with disabilities, it minimizes conflicts with existing traffic patterns in the vicinity. It further complies with building orientation and massing, as evidenced by locating active uses, doors, and windows adjacent to the sidewalk. Uh, it also is, demonstrates urban design excellence. And all sides and areas of the buildings that are visible to the public are to be treated with materials, finishes, and architectural details that are of high quality 
and appropriate for use on primary public right of way <coughs> facing facades. Please refer to my staff report for further details regarding this project and the plans identified here today. Based on the foregoing, it is the recommendation of the zoning administrator of the Department of Planning and Development that this application to establish a residential business plan development be approved and forwarded to the City Council Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards as such. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Searle. Yes, I, <clears throat> if you could go back to the elevation uh, that shows the the open floor on one side and then <clears throat> I just, I may have missed this and I apologize if so. Um, <clears throat> How does one reach the open space in the um, south building, you know, where the cutout is? Uh, is that is there a, an amenity space on the north building that lets you get to that area? Yes, yeah, correct. Go ahead. Ed. If you can go back to the um, I mean, yes, the level five amenity plan. Okay. So you may enter. Um, the two towers are connected. Um, and so you may enter from the enclosed amenity space and there is, um, and correct, thank you for showing that, um, access to that outdoor amenity um, from that indoor amenity space. Okay, and then behind it, behind the enclosed space, I didn't even realize there's the outdoor space to the west as well. Correct, That's the right. outdoor okay. space does wrap um, from the south uh, area of the of the tower and then around to the west um, and north um, of the tower is is the full amenity area outdoor amenity area and so is that reachable from the ground level as well or what level can you get to the elevator that would take you up to this or the stairs the ground level ground will level take okay. you through these elevators and to this floor yes okay okay great Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Commissioner Lyons. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, just a question. You had mentioned, you know, the as we're all sort of I'm becoming familiar with the new ARO, um, but I appreciated you mentioned the particular project that was um, going to be built in the third ward. I, I think you mentioned that. Um, maybe the developer for that project was there. I wasn't, you know, I know, I'm, I don't know. I'm just curious or what, when we might see that um, come to fruition. I think it's really great to sort of see this as part of the presentation and understand a little bit about, you know, the sort of impacts, not just um, in this ward, but sort of the, the larger impacts that, that we're going to see. So I'm curious if we can learn just briefly a little bit about um, when we might see this project and um, if there's anything the uh, developer would like to say about it. Um, AJ, are you on? I'm not able to see whether um, you are. If not, I'll answer on your behalf. Um, yep, I'm, I'm here. Absolutely. Okay. Do you yeah, mind so speaking a little about. bit about your project and maybe also including where you're at in the zoning process? I know that you're represented um, by Langdon Neal. He's, he, you and he have been great collaborators in this process with us. And uh, why don't you introduce yourself to the commission and speak a little bit about your project? Thank, thank you, thank you, Rich. Um, AJ Patton, uh, 548 Development. Uh, we've got this project here in uh, 2548 South Federal. It's a, a great opportunity to create affordable units where they're currently or not. It's a highly gentrifying neighborhood. We're uh, luckily we got the opportunity to partner with Sterling Bay on this opportunity that they're filling a funding gap that creates some space for more affordable units to actually come online. Uh, it will be a, you know, our, at 548, we specialize in sustainable developments. So this will have uh, a majority electric building, rooftop solar, EV training, uh, EV um, uh, charging stations. And then we've, we partner with uh, local workforce training programs as well for in terms of how this will be built out. So we're really excited about this project and this opportunity. Thank you Thank very you. much. Did that answer your question, Commissioner Lyons? Yes, and um, I was curious, will we see it before before the plan commission or is this, are you guys, uh, uh, is this a different sort of project? Um, I, my, it's my understanding that AJ does require a zoning change, but it will be a type one and therefore not go to the plan commission, but go directly to the committee on zoning. Well, look forward to following it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Tunney, followed by Commissioner Moore. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman. Uh, my question is uh, more on the uh, 
the electrical vehicle stations. I, there's it sounded like there's 89 or so parking spaces and seven and, and seven and a half EV stations. Uh, two questions. How was that figure determined as a ratio? And then what was the what is the cost since this new construction of you know put providing more EV um, as we probably look forward to uh, more demand for electrical vehicles um, in the very near future. So number one, how is it, how is the, uh, the number determined, the cost, and, and maybe I'll say, why not more? So. Uh, Chair, um, before the applicant answers, I just want to, one point of clarification for all of them, Tony, Commissioner Tony, the 7.5 is actually the yeah. uh, number associated with the sustainable checklist. So that's not the number oh, of spaces associated correct. with it. Uh, and yeah, well, I'm sorry. That's all right. I just wanted to clarify that. And then the applicant can respond. Okay. Yeah, thank you. That, um, I was going to uh, piggyback off that, Noah. And thank you, Alderman Tunney. So, yeah, the, that's the section. Um, currently, there will be uh, a minimum of two um, parking stalls that will be served by the EV charging station. Um, in terms of cost, I'm going to turn that over to um, Sterling Bay. Hi, good morning. This is Brian Bazanis with Sterling Bay. Um, we are considering looking at additional charging stations, but uh, haven't really landed on a number yet. Uh, we, we were following the, the, the requirements of the Green Globes 2 uh, strategy, so we can look at adding more, but uh, we're still looking at it. Okay, so this is for the department then. What, what, is, what is the... What is the formula? How can it be changed? And I'm sorry, did I hear from Mr. Bazanis the cost per stall? I didn't hear that, I don't think. Uh, we don't, I don't have a good estimate on what the cost per stall is right now. Um, I can look into that and provide further information later. Yeah, in front, and especially when it comes to the zoning committee, which I chair. But back to the department, what are we doing in terms of, of this issue? Sure. Uh, Alderman, Alderman Tunney, Commissioner Tunney, it's Noah again. Uh, so there, there's a minimum of one stall would serve typically two cars, and that's the minimum to receive the points under the sustainable policy. We certainly encourage them to put in as many as possible. Um, the, in order for them to get their permit, they will have to submit the sustainable checklist at the time of permit. So any changes or any alterations that they want to make to something that they're proposing today, that will all be vetted and finalized. Um, we have a gentleman in our office, uh, Brad Robeck. He's our sustainability officer, and he he reviews all these when they come in for building permits. So at a minimum, if they want these 10 points, at a minimum, it has to be two spaces. Uh, and uh, as you heard from Sterling Bay, potentially they'll look at doing more. Okay, so I don't want to beat a dead horse, but uh, I, I think it's, it's probably not, since this building will be here for the next 50 to 100 years, um, and I believe we're heading towards this and everyone has said it's so much easier to put it in with new construction than it is to retrofit. So I just don't know whether the sustainable issue can be addressed a little bit more appropriately as the technology is becoming much more available and the and the purchases are, are becoming whatever. And one of the problems with my understanding is there just isn't enough charging stations stations for the demand, uh, you know, for electric vehicles. So I just don't know how, our, our point is, how do we get ahead of this and how do we work with uh, the Department of Planning or other departments in regards to this requirement? So, and you know where I'm going with it, so, okay. Um. Is that it, Commissioner Tony? Yeah, any, that's it. Mm -hmm. any, other response, any other response to that? I'm going to look for some more information, Chairman, and I'll, I'll and I'll get this back to the Planning Commission. Yeah, and, and where other cities are at too. Maybe maybe we're. I, I think we have we have a requirement in the code, and I'm going to check into that too for you. I don't have it off the top of my head at my fingertips right here, but I will find it and send it to all the Planning Commissioners. Thank you, thank you, Chairwoman. I, I really appreciate the line of questioning that you're that you're asking, Commissioner Tony, because. Um, you're saying, all right, is there, are there things that we could be doing now to, to put into place as we, as we think about the future? Um, and, we, and we do have to, these are the very kinds of things I think that we do need to be, to be thinking about, right, as we, as we, uh, as we face 
um, some some tough times. So, um, and how how can we yeah. how can we, how can we both avoid and mitigate, right? Chair, uh, Chairwoman, I thought seven I thought seven was not adequate enough, and then it went down to two. So. <laughs> right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, well, well, you know, it'd be an interesting thing, I think, to come back, um, Noah, to the Plan Commission, and maybe we could even have a uh, a discussion about this. What is, you know, are there things that could be put into place that would help ensure some some forward thinking on this? Madam Chair, I believe Michael Berkshire uh, might have something to add. I was just going to call on him, um, but uh, is it specific to this point because Commissioner Moore is waiting? Uh, yes, it is. It, it's in okay. reaction to Commissioner Tunney's uh, question. Uh, the sustainable development policy can be updated um, at the by the department at any time. So um, I know Brad is looking into doing a, a pretty major update, but in the interim, we could make changes to any of the strategies within that within that policy. So we could increase the number of of EV uh, charging stations that are required in order to uh, achieve those points associated with that strategy at any time. Okay, so if you can work with, with Noah on this, go ahead, go ahead, Noah. Oh yeah, just, uh, I didn't realize my hand was be raised, but just as a point of clarification, I just checked the section of the code and for a residential building, 20% of these spaces are required to be EVSE ready or EVSE installed. So if there are 80, um, I'm sorry, what was the number of parking spaces, Josh? 89. 89, so they'll have uh, eight, roughly 18 spaces in there will have to be EVSE ready or EVSE installed as part of their permit. Did you wanna say something uh, Something from a developer? Was there, did I, I heard someone try it. Was that you, Mr. Yeah. Um I was just chiming in about the parking count. Okay. But uh, but I heard what Noah just said too about the uh, 18 parking stalls. We'll take a, a, another look at that and make sure we're meeting the requirements of the Green Globes program and then uh, required uh, number of charging stations, whether they're uh, fully charged or fully active at the time of turnover or uh, future capacity and capability. Yeah, good. Yeah, especially thinking about that's fantastic. Um, I'm sure we'll just add for those on the call, I'll give the citation so they can find it. It's uh, chapter 17 10 1011. Uh, you'll find the requirements under that section. But you want to say it again? 17 10 1011. Okay, fantastic. Um, all right, so I uh, can I go to Commissioner Moore? Thank you for your patience, Commissioner. Um, yes, thank you. No problem. Um, that was a very interesting conversation. I definitely support environmental and sustainability issues. So um, I enjoyed hearing that. Uh, but I wanted to just say how um, actually pleased I am to see this partnership between um, Sterling Bay and AJ's company um, as a minority contractor is really um, I'm very excited for him as he won a couple of Invest Southwest projects. Um, on the South side, and I'm looking forward to working with him in other capacities, but I just wanted to give a shout out to him and let him know that, um, that it's, that we'll be watching and supporting him throughout the process. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Alderman Burnett, would you like to weigh in on, on this project? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner and Commissioners. Um, so as the counselor said, they did meet with the three community organizations in the community. Uh, we also had a community meeting, uh, the communities in support of it. Uh, we appreciate the fact, uh, uh, along with, with my uh, colleague, the commissioner just said that uh, they're working with AJ. Uh, unselfishly, I'm allowing them to do the ARO in the third ward uh, because it's not just about my area with affordable housing. Uh, but also uh, it's uh, refreshing to be able to uh, support and help a young African-American up and coming developer. Matter of fact, I think I want to grow up and be like AJ. Um, he's doing great things. Uh, he's making a mark and uh, hopefully we could uh, incubate uh, more young people uh, to get into the development field uh, like him. So I appreciate Sterling Bay working with him. Uh, appreciate uh, Sterling Bay's commitment for uh, MBWBE 
uh, but I also want to make sure that they hire people from the community uh, so that my community can benefit from it. Again, uh, the $2 million that's going to go to the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund uh, is good for the rest of the Invest Southwest folks uh, on the west and the south side. So we're unselfishly happy that, that that's happening uh, to, to help build up those communities also. Uh, it looks that there's going to be about uh, two to 300 construction jobs on this development. Several people would be working inside the building. Once it's done, uh, it's gonna help all of the other amenities uh, throughout the community to be able to sustain themselves. I support this, my community support it. I uh, ask for uh, the committee to support it also. Hopefully uh, I can um, uh, talk to uh, Sterling Bay and their lawyers before it goes to zoning to make sure that we have a hiring component for people in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alderman. I also want to note for the record that Commissioner Novada has joined us. Um, did you want to make a uh, comment or ask a question, Commissioner? I would, thank you. And um, apologies that I missed this presentation. Commissioner Reyes and I were both at a groundbreaking in Pilsen. So um, I, I wish that I had been here for the presentation, but I do just want to speak to the Department of Housing support for this. It's exciting for us because this is the first instance uh, where we're seeing the new affordable requirements ordinance um, playing out. And one of the things that we're excited about in addition to the partnership that, that folks have been speaking to and um, and the um, spreading of some affordability to additional parts of the city, which we're excited about. We're also for the first time seeing lower incomes being served through the ARO. And that's um, been a, a big goal of ours. It's one that we put in place for the first time with this new ARO so that we're getting to lower incomes um, through these affordable units. So I, I wanna add um, my support and my thanks to um, Sterling Bay and um, 548 Capital for making this whole thing work and to the Alderman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Back to you, Alderman. You, you, want, you want to follow up? Thing? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. I just wanted to uh, note and make sure, just as I do with all developers in my ward, uh, I'd like to see a joint venture with a minority contractor with, with whomever the uh, contractor they're going to pick to do this development. So I appreciate if we can talk about that before it goes to zoning. Thank you. Great. And I'm just about ready to ask for a motion, but let me go to Commissioner Cox first. Uh, th thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I, I did want to also just uh, highlight and perhaps um, uh, some of the uh, things that have been stated uh, from the other departments, because it's really, in many ways, is, uh, is exemplary of uh, what we hope um, to see. Um, first, with the partnership between uh, Sterling Bay and an emerging minority a developer um, in um, 548. Um, I think it's, it's, it, it is um, a testament to the new ARO uh, that we are seeing affordable housing that goes outside of the, the, the ward that is generating uh, this benefit. I, I think that flexibility has been um, long overdue and I appreciate the alderman support um, to, to allow for this affordable housing to happen in another area that is gentrifying. Um, I also would uh, like to applaud the fact that it is an adaptive reuse project. So we are lifting up these historic assets and reusing them as well. That's very important to me. Um, the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund contribution, uh, when I see a uh, roughly $2 million contribution, uh, I see eight uh, new black and brown entrepreneurs getting their start uh, on the west and south side because the maximum grant amount is 250,000. So uh, we should always think about those that fund as real entrepreneurs opening real businesses in the south and west side. Uh, and then lastly, I just wanna give a shout out to um, BKL and their uh, really tireless effort uh, to um, massage that the building proposal in a way that is very, very respectful for the historic district. Um, and uh, B 
the adjacencies, the, the, the kind of creation of a, a public realm in front of the residential tower, uh, the destination of, a, of an upper level um, collective space. It's just extremely sensitively done. Uh, and uh, so I'm very pleased. I know this was a result of uh, multiple reiterations and reviews with uh, our staff, but I think the outcome uh, speaks for itself in, in kind of exemplary building that I think will be a wonderful addition uh, to the district. So uh, very, very strong uh, proposal and uh, very happy to support it. Great, thank you. And do I have a motion on the proposed residential business plan development submitted by 160 North Morgan LLC for the property generally located at 160 North Morgan Street, <coughs> finding that it meets the requirements for approval. Moved by Commissioner Shaw. Uh, second. second. Commissioner Shaw. Second. Um, I, do I do have an, um, uh, a, couple, a, a hand that I missed. Um, Commissioner Lyons, was that before I go to the vote? Commissioner Lyons? Um, Yes. Well, apologies for the late, and just a, a hopefully a quick question. Um, I know, I think Sterling Bay had partnered with um, Hire360 and has been a partner. And I was just curious if um, that was going to continue um, on this. I appreciated the slide about the economic and community benefits. And um, just curious, I know you've done great work with sort of that pipeline of um, apprenticeships and, and um, hiring from the community. So just curious if Hire360 would be part of this as well. Yes, Commissioner, um, we are proud of our partnership and collaboration with Hire360 and do plan to leverage their resources and ability to help create um, workforce development opportunities for um, minority um, participants in particular. So that will be applicable to this project. And I did wanna to respond to the Alderman's uh, comment pertaining to a joint venture. We are um, very proud to announce that we will be um, having a joint venture between Walsh Construction and Boa Construction on this project. Great, thank you very much. And with that, uh, the motion on the floor, who, who gave the second for that motion? Commissioner Moore. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, with that, let me go to the vote. Um, uh, Commissioner Biagi. Yes. Commissioner Brumfeld, uh, excuse me, Commissioner Brumfeld. Yes. And Commissioner Burnett is a recusal. Commissioner Cordova is a yes. Commissioner Cox? Uh, yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Garza? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Kelly is a yes. Commissioner Lyons? Yes. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Commissioner Murphy? Yes. Commissioner Nevada? Yes. Commissioner Searle? Yes. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Commissioner Tunney? Commissioner Tunney? And Commissioner Wagespuck? Yes. Motion passes. Congratulations. We appreciate the, the presentation and the, and the great work. So we'll look forward to seeing this, this building. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Much appreciated. Thank you.